in ICA. Um, and so we've been recognized severally in the Innovation Awards um, set by the Insurance Regulatory Authority. Uh, we've also been awarded um, as the People's Choice Best Insurance Company. Um, and this was a survey that was just done um, across, across the country. So we, the IC that I represent is one that is desperate to change and is desperate to shake itself um, for the benefit of the clients that we serve. Um, so I would want to quickly dive now into, into why we are here today. So the annuity plan that I'm going to talk about is a plan that um, we launched, not launched, we started rolling out um, to the public a few years ago, um, and it was a strategic decision for us to um, get as much feedback as we could and vary and tarry the product as much as we could um, during that process to lead us to this day to day. So the reality of life now basically is that um, we have people living longer after retirement. I think the average age, um, the average number of years after retirement that people live now is about 20 years. So if you consider um, an average retiree of um, 60, um, chances are more that they will live to 80 and beyond um, than they would have um, maybe five, 10 years ago. Uh, now, with this, of course, comes in the aspects of social security, and social security is basically to, pr to protect the fabric of the, so of the society, which is the older persons. When you add in the problem of standards of living um, rising, significantly by, by the day and by the night, and the fact that the, what we used to know or what we were told about um, the social fabric, that you know, um, have children and th those children will, will look after you in your retirement, we get to see that we, are, we actually have an imminent problem that we must deal with and we must address. Um, our children, um, I have three boys, um, if I was to ever tell them that they will look after me when I stop working, I think they would wonder why. Um, um, because first of all, they see the pain I go through to look after my own parent and parents, given, that, given the nature of our society. Um, and sometimes there are, some, there are certain sacrifices that you have to take just to do that. But I would say that the, the lines in the social fabric are getting thinner but unnecessarily so because um, it's about the decisions that we take today that should determine whether we are a burden to our children um, or whether our children um, feel happy to associate and be with us because they know that we will not shake them up for anything. So the typical question that I would ask is, um, you know, if you were to receive your pension tomorrow and never have to work a day in your life, um, you know how far would your funds get you? And the simple illustration for this is that um, if you are to retire today, the idea is that your typical running expenses, the typical costs that you spend on a day-to-day -day basis would reduce by about 30%, and that 30% accounts for the new clothes, the suits that you have to wear, possibly the frequent transportation that you incur to the office, the meals that you, that you um, take whilst you're in the office. So once you take that out of the picture, then you now get to the about 70%, which then covers your social obligations, because those obligations stay. As a matter of fact, they even rise up. Um, you have funerals, you have weddings, you have all sorts of things. Um, so the question then is, you know, how far would your kitty take you? Um, the ICA annuity plan addresses this very, very, very important question, um, but it specifically adds the aspect of, um, you know, quality of life in it. Because at the end of the day, um, when you retire, the quality of life that you lead in retirement shouldn't be less than the quality of life that you live before retirement. One of my directors once told me that um, he has to wake up very early in the morning, um, I think about 6 a.m. every day in retirement because if he doesn't, um, he might end up looking like his neighbors. Um, so 
quality of life, and I don't want to, to talk too much about that because um, there will be an opportunity to, to speak about that, but the quality of life then that you lead um, is one that should be easily determined and maintained by an annuity plan. Um, and now I'll just quickly go through what an annuity plan is. So an annuity is basically a series of payments made at fixed intervals of time as predetermined by um, you, the person who wants to take up an annuity, and the provider of the annuities. Um, so these regular payouts ensure that you enjoy income for a life, for life, um, and the annuity plan basically guarantees a stress-free, enjoyable retirement. Now, an annuity for itself, for its sake, basically, is simply buying salary. It's simply earning a salary without having to work. Um, what it basically means is that um, I need to go back maybe about, um, about um, is it 200 years ago? Um, so after one of the world wars, one of the problems, one of the challenges that the German um, chancellor had was that they ha he had a lot of these ex-soldiers who'd fought and defended, let's call it defended, the sovereignty of Germany. But the challenge then was they didn't have skills to do anything else. Um, and they were becoming restless, getting into all sorts of bad things. Um, but the biggest problem was also that they needed, the biggest issue which they had was they lacked a livelihood. And to paraphrase, the long and short journey of annuities and pension started around about that time. And the idea of it is simply to say that once you've worked your life, once you've worked in service for anything, you must have something then that is given to you as a kitty, which is either um, a confirmation of payments without you having to work till death, or giving you the option to use the funds that you have to actually purchase lifetime income. And now that's where the annuity comes in. Um, the annuity is akin to what happens in the government's civil service, where you have pension provided, um, of course, with all its challenges. Um, the annuity then comes in to say that um, if you're a civil servant um, and you have the kitty from the government, which is usually a fraction of your last salary, you could also supplement it with an annuity plan. Or if you are maybe fortunate not to have worked in government and possibly have worked in the private sector, and have a kitty with a fund like NSSF or a private um, retirement benefit scheme like what some of the employers have locally here, you have the opportunity to use that to actually purchase um, lifetime income. And that lifetime income is critically important um, because it guarantees your quality of life in retirement. Um, so typically speaking, the annuity is determined by um, what we call a quoted amount, and that quoted amount um, basically um, considers what funds you have available, um, or on the flip side, what monthly income you'd love to receive for the rest of your life. And the rule of thumb that I, as a budding financial advisor, give um, all the annuity clients and prospects that I speak with is that you must be able to meet your monthly expenditure, the typical monthly expenditure, you know, the utility bills, water, electricity, um, subscription for possibly DSTV or Netflix, whatever the case may be, um, or a club gathering that you have to pay monthly subs for. Um, you must be able to feed yourself within that. You must be able to clothe yourself um, as the case may be, and you must be able to also meet some of the expenses like fueling your car and doing the things that you did um, before retirement that were not work-related. Because again, if you drop down in stature, if you drop down, then you start to look like your neighbors. Of course, the neighbors are usually um, not good people to look at or to compare yourself with, unless if I am your neighbor. But um, <laughs> ideally, for you not to blend in the wrong environment, you must maintain a certain level and quality of life. And that quality of life can only be maintained on your own terms. And if it has to be on your own terms, then it must be with your own resources. And those resources then are what would be provided 
by the annuity payments that you would receive. So typically, the annuity is phased in four distinct phases. I think the first, um, which is the most important phase, um, which is important now from a psychological preparation perspective is the accumulation phase. And you accumulate funds for the purchase of lifetime income as you work. So if you work um, as we all do, as most of us do, let me, let me not put myself, let me not make everyone be like me. As most of us do, um, many times we work hand to mouth, which means whatever you get, you eat. Um, so you do not accumulate anything, um, possibly save for that which is mandatory through NSSF and through the in-house schemes that you have. But the accumulation phase is very, very important. And why it's important is that at that, at that point in time is when you actually set your mind to the fact that um, you get to agree or you get to reconcile to the fact that retirement is ripe, it will happen, and you set the conditions in which you will retire. So the accumulation phase is then, you know, um, used by us usually to make quotations um, where we will tell you that, you know, at age 55 or at age 60, this is the amount of money that you can take home on a month to month basis um, until death um, until death comes. And usually the determinants of the price or of the value that you take home are on the basis of demographics, that's your age, your sex. Uh, of course, um, ladies usually live longer than men in retirement. Um, I don't know why, but um, I think there's a theory um, which is very prevalent. Um, there are very many men when they receive their pension, um, they become handsome. Not not to themselves, but to those around them. They are very, very attractive. Um, we've, I've had a personal case. Um, I wish that person was here to tell you for himself because you might think I'm kidding. We have a retiree who retired. We tried to convince him to take the annuity, um, but um, he was convinced that he, he still has capability to have a child. Now the, he has the child and the child is crying and um, there's nothing to put in the child's mouth. Um, but you see, he only became attractive when he had that money. Um, and now he has no money and a child. Um, and the, the thing that confirmed he was attractive disappeared to look for the next juicy flower. You must, you must seek to avoid this because um, money, as they say, is fleeting in your hands. And if you don't look at it well and make it do what it's supposed to do, then it will actually um, become, as they say in the Bible, um, the root of all evil. Okay, um, so when you look at the annuity and the, and the determinants, um, you get to realize that it's simply designed um, to be a reliable means of securing a steady cash flow in retirement. Um, as you go through work, you're used to the next paycheck. We leave for the next paycheck. Um, you, you know, there's a cycle that's created and everyone always looks forward to the next paycheck. Um, and that, in a way, also um, brings in longevity of life. Um, a workmate of mine once, I think in 2018, told me that um, the excitement he sees his father have when he's going to receive his 50,000 shillings from the civil service pension scheme is one that is very sure has kept his father alive. And his father at that point, I think was approaching 90 years and he's still alive to date. That expectation of money is so important. Um, it's, it drives everything. It's, you know, that proverbial carrot before the donkey. It keeps it going and it keeps life, life worth living and life moving ahead. So generally speaking, I would say that uh, the annuity um, for a typical retiree would start on purchase if they've reached the retirement age, or you can actually defer it and purchase it to start, um, you know, three, four, five, ten years down the road. Um, from the categories uh, of annuities, okay, so, um, yes, so from the categories of annuities, um, we have three distinct categories. Um, the most common type of annuity um, is a single life annuity, where it's just the individual that has purchased the annuity, so it's dependent on that life. Um, the other one, which is also quite 
common um, and very, I would say, attractive um, and important, mostly if, if you want, if you don't trust, but also if you trust a lot, is the joint um, annuity which caters for couples. Um, this is only for couples, so it's man and wife. Um, the example I gave you of the man that uh, became attractive, that kind of couple would not qualify. Um, so this, this is a couple that has lived their life together um, and are re retiring literally together. And so basically what it does is that it provides a payment until the last person dies. So that if, um, as they say, the men will die earlier, so that when the man dies, um, the spouse, the wife, still continues to receive a payment until they die. Um, we, we add in a few tangents as well in the annuities. One is um, the escalations, um, which would just come in to cater for the inflationary tendencies. And this you pick, we have options of 0% escalation, which means um, possibly that you want to eat your money now. Um, we have 3% and 5%. Of course, the assumptions on escalation are simply that um, they, there is inflation, we live in an inflationary environment and you'd want the money, the income that you receive to mimic the salary regime that we all go through where you know you have once in a while increments on the basis of inflationary adjustments. And that then goes on and on and on um, until death as well. So if you, if you say pick 5% escalation, it basically means on an, on, on an annual basis, the amount that you receive as an annuitant in annuity payments will increase consistently by 5% until death. Um, we, we usually when we speak about annuities, um, people think that we are praying for you to die. We actually know we pray for you to, to live. I think we have an annuity, an annuitant in our group that we've paid for the last 50 years. Um, she's 111 years old. Um, and that can show you how important it is and how we also keep track to just make sure that you live a very long and fulfilled life. Um, so the, I talked about the annuity being deferred and um, immediate as well. Um, so I'll just quickly do a quick illustration for what an annuity typically would look like. So for a 60-year-old male um, with a purchase price of 100 million, so the purchase price um, comes in through the accumulation phase. You can either choose to take up a separate policy just to um, secure 100 million, or you can use or assign your retirement benefits, be it NSSF, or um, your in-house retirement scheme if you have one. Or the other way to look at it is if, uh, if through your lifetime you have, you have accumulated assets, um, this is a time when you can assign an asset to say, you know, this block of flats will be my annuity, which I'll convert. And you know, once you sell, then we get the purchase price to now take away the, um, the hassle that goes through life of collecting premium, sorry, collecting rent, um, chasing tenants that are not paying, um, doing repairs, the works, as I'm sure many of you have gone through this. So um, with that, at zero escalation, typically um, we have the other columns that I will not talk about, which is the guaranteed period, um, but I would say that as ICA, we elected um, from experience that at no point shall we provide an annuity without a guarantee period. Um, and the guarantee period is simply to say that um, if in the unfortunate event that God calls you earlier than the, a minimum of 10 years, then we, will, we are obligated and will honor the obligations of making payments to your next of kin until the end of the 10th year. Um, and if they're desperate to receive um, the money in a lump sum, we can come up with the present values and compute and pay them out. But ideally, um, we, do not, um, we do not take take chances um, because we do not give life, but we want to make sure that the monies that you entrust with us um, come back to you basically twofold. Um, so if you notice that um, the, the, so this illustration might be a bit confusing because it's small, um, but typically speaking, I'll explain the last, um, the second last line, which has 5% escalation. Basically, that means that um, every year there's a 5% increment in the payments to the annuitant. Um, so um, if you're to do 5% for 10 years, then you do 5% of the 836,000 over a 10-year period to get what you'll be receiving in 10 years' time. 
um, with zero escalation. It basically means you, you get more value now than later. So to cater for, for um, inflationary adjustments, we usually encourage um, clients to consider at the very least 3% escalation um, because with more longevity as well, um, your funds will almost double from the 957,000 to about 1.8 million every month, um, around about the 15th year. Um, but we are ready to share with you a bit more detail on, on that. Um, now, I'd want to say that the annuity that we offer is one that we offer, and we term the annuity with a difference. Um, we care so much about you as a person, as a client, um, and we know, we know that health care is one of the most critical components of um, old age. Um, and, you know, a study was done and it was discovered that retirees use about 15% of their annual expenses on health care related costs. Now, that 15% study came out of um, a developed market that had retirees who look after themselves. If we were to do a similar study here, um, we would be saying that the cost borne by um, people like me who look after our parents and you, I'm sure, um, would be significant even more than the 15% um, threshold that has been created. And all these are healthcare related expenses. So for us, being in good health is top priority. Um, and we know that when it comes to health, you can't really predict what's around the corner. But we know that we can make sure that you as the retiree have the right plan in place. So we try and we've done our very best to get the right health cover um, to cover you in your senior years. And we know this is a, deli a delicate balancing act because typically um, insurances and healthcare providers frown um, the older you get because I think the body is um, getting more and more worn out. But as I see here, for us, we actually look at that as something that is very, very, very critical. So we, we term and we call our annuity one with a difference because um, we offer a holistic um, approach and cover all the dynamics of life in the senior years. Um, we provide an exclusive um, free health care policy for the first two years after onboarding and commencement of the annuity payout. Um, and this, this, this for sure reduces significantly the burden imposed on annuity payments um, by removing completely the cost of basic health care. Um, so we've partnered with um, a leading health provider of medical insurance services to provide this, and we've seen this work. Um, the other thing which is important is the medical second opinion. Um, the medical second opinion is one also that comes in um, because we live and work in a society or in an environment um, that is not bereft of, uh, of trust, but that, um, that you would say um, you would hardly believe what, you, what you're hearing if you go to a doctor. Um, of course, for various reasons, we've all heard and we've all seen, we've all experienced a misdiagnosis. Um, so what we do uh, as, as ICA with the annuity offering is that um, we offer you f um, a medical second opinion option, which is um, a multidisciplinary consultative panel of top clinicians, um, globally top clinicians. Um, the typical case of someone who has a first diagnosis of cancer, um, and we've seen many of that, um, unfortunately what happens is the next thing they want to do is to jump on a plane and head to India um, or any other place to get a second opinion, a confirmation. But with the medical second opinion, we offer you this service where you're at um, with the tests that you've already done so that we do not have any additional intrusive um, tests done unless if it's um, important that you have additional tests. Um, you know, for the case of um, cancer, for example, um, with the medical second op opinion, you have the opportunity once you've received a diagnosis um, and you, you think you actually need to run it by um, someone else, 
um, you know, to have a multidisciplinary team, you know, that in includes, for example, a medical oncologist, um, a radiation oncologist, uh, a surgical oncologist, a pathologist and radiologists, all seated around one table just analyzing your test results to figure out exactly what they need to do or what kind of treatment would work for you to put you back on your feet. Um, and we've seen and we've had testimonies, um, we've had live examples that we've used already for this, that um, in all instances where we've used this solution in Uganda here, the test results have led to um, updates or changes or tweaks in the medical um, treatment that the patients are subjected to, which means that ideally um, there are certain things, there are certain drugs that you would take which would be avoided just by this. And we are very happy to say that um, we take our annuitants very, 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 um, we treat them with the care that they deserve and we are offering this service which is a first of its kind. Um, and I'm sure some of you have heard of facilities like UCLA Health, that is University of California, um, you've heard of Mass General Brigham and all the world's leading facilities. All these, all these are at our beck and call when you take up an annuity plan. And we'll make sure that you actually enjoy these services because for us, we want to make sure that you actually live longer and you live a more fulfilled life because if you didn't, then we would have failed in our original mandate. So with that said, um, I'd want to talk still a bit more about the benefits, but um, specifically, um, you will never outlive the income that you receive with an annuity when you buy an annuity, which basically means as long as you're breathing, we will be paying. Um, we, as I've said, our oldest annuitant is 111 years old and she's been receiving payments for the last 50 years. Um, you can customize your income stream. You can choose it to be monthly, quarterly, um, name it. We also have the option which we provide, which is to say that um, if God calls you as an annuity client of ours, we will actually make sure that you get a decent send-off. Um, the decent send-off basically means that um, if, if you allow us, we will make sure that um, we have the best service provider to look after the last, the last respects that you go through, which is to say, you know, you have um, a decent grave to be buried in. Uh, of course, if that's important for you, or if you want to be fried, we make sure that you're fried in the best possible place and your remains are um, possibly bottled in the best possible looking vase. Um, but above all, I think the annuity, if there's anything that you should take from me, gives you the peace of mind to know that no matter what, you will never outlive your income. Um, the typical journey for the annuity is um, for you, the annuitant, to pay to us, um, transfer to us money, and we provide with you the, um, the annuity policy. Of course, this comes after um, we've done the quotation, which is on the basis of the demographics and the monetary environment at that point in time. Um, but our annuitants um, we, we, that we have, we pay them on the 25th of every month. Um, because I'm the CEO, before I pay salaries, um, the annuities have to have been paid. Um, so it's, it's, it's that important and we've built this muscle over time. As I've said, um, we, have the we have a robust system, a payroll system that is able to efficiently pay out um, annuity payments um, on a month to month basis, um, just like clockwork. Um, to mimic or even better the experience that you had when you were still in gainful employment. Um, I would wish that you would all get the opportunity to enjoy the annuity experience with us. Um, but I know I'll come to that a bit later. So would love you to enjoy your retirement and make your golden years um, as happy as possible. Um, there are many people who try to, to do tie and die. Um, many times to try to masquerade uh, that they're either younger and capable of doing something. Um, but the proud annuitant is that one who um, who wears that golden crown? If you look around the room, you will see um, you will see the golden crowns that I mean, and that's what we are happy to see, and that's what we seek to look out for. Um, but I have a testimony um, from one of us in the room, um, so with her permission, uh, I don't know, Mrs. Dorothy, if you want to come and stand here as your video plays, no, you will come after. Um, so I'll just 
share a video in the next two minutes. Um, Moses, over to you. My name is Dorothy Senogazake. I worked for Makerere University for around 30 years. At the time of my retirement, I got an opportunity to interact with many members of staff who had already retired from the university service. I noticed that most of them used to come back complaining that the money that they had got was not adequate. Within a short time, they had already exhausted all their ben retirement benefits. So this set me thinking about what I would do when time came for me to retire. Luckily enough, the retirement scheme of, of the university organized trainings for people who are about to retire. And at one of the trainings, the ICA officials were invited and they talked about the annuity plan. It was going to be for the rest of my life. Even if something happened to me, uh, within the guarantee period, my beneficiaries would get something. I also liked that, uh, that the payments would be coming monthly. All members of staff had that fear that after, after retirement, it would be difficult to get something that would continuously give us an income on a monthly basis after retirement. I'm enjoying. I can easily plan on what to do. Even when we go for meetings or functions, I can even contribute knowing that something else will come at the end of the month. But there is an opportunity under the annuity plan for the medical insurance too. The ICA has been in business for a very long time, so they, they can be trusted with, that, with your funds and you would be getting your money for the rest of your life. And even if something happened to you, your beneficiaries will also continue getting that, that money. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this annuity plan to all other people out there working for various organizations to invest their retirement benefits in the annuity plan. Okay, so, um, you know, when they take videos usually, people touch up, yeah? Um, the, the day I met Mrs. Dorothy, she looked better than the video, live. Um, so I'd want to possibly ask her to stand up and wave so that you can see that a child in Boko. <laughs> As I see it, we believe that for every life-changing moment, and retirement is a life-changing moment, we are better together. Get your hands on with an annuity for a difference, with a difference, and live a fulfilled life in retirement. Thank you for listening to me. Round of applause to <laughs> Mr. Emmanuel Mwaka. Thank you very much. You've made the impossible thoughts become the possible. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to Mrs. Dorothy Zake. is simply made the presentation practical. You know, in an African setting, there is always a doubting Thomas somewhere. But when you see the people we stay with, we live with, 
practically telling you the same. It is possible. Uh, when Obama was starting his campaign, he has used the tagline, yes, we can, and yes, you can. If she did it, you can, you can, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the video has already introduced me, <laughs> so I don't know what more to add. Uh, maybe to mention that I worked for Makere University for around 30 years, and I was privileged uh, uh, towards the end of my retirement. I was privileged to work in the Human Resources Office and specifically the office which was handling retirees. My uh, career has a practice of paying out a whole sum retirement aid, I mean package at a go. Just at this one time, it's not uh, like government where they pay monthly up to when someone goes to, to heaven. So, uh, I, many retirees used to come to me after getting their package. They would take like two or three years to have exhausted their funds. So some of them used to come back to me complaining and requesting us to calculate again, eh, whether, to find out whether there was something more. Eh? So that bothered me. Uh, luckily enough, ICEA organized trainings for members of staff uh, in liaison with the Makere University Retirement Benefits Scheme. They organized training for people who are about to retire. And this is when I came to get information about the annuity. It is something that I had, I had never heard about. Mm. So, and I, I got interested in it and even uh, but at, at retirement, I didn't, I did not decide right away to, to give in my, my money. In fact, I left my money with uh, my retirement benefits with Makere University for around a year, still thinking, uh, exploring various uh, scenarios where I would invest my money. I even came to ICA offices to get more information. I even took my lawyer with me, along with me. Took <laughs> and, and even I went back to Makere University uh, to get more information from MABS. And the, uh, the, the person who was handling the retirement benefit scheme at that time, in fact, I'm privileged he's, he's here with us. <laughs> uh, he also convinced me to invest in, the, in this scheme. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, I was really convinced to, to invest all my retirement benefits in the annuity program. What I did further, I had a project of pine trees. They were 10 year old. I sold them all and added so that I could begin with a, 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 a a reasonable amount. Mm. What I've liked about uh, this, this scheme is the consistency and continuity. Uh, even during the COVID period, you remember most of you had problems, but, <laughs> 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 but for me, my money was, <laughs> My money was hitting my account. I would just get the SMS telling me that the money was already on the, on the account. <laughs> and I, I can easily participate in various things. At the church, I'm one of the dependable people eh? <laughs> that they come to when, whenever there are projects. <laughs> I keep on telling them that I'm a retiree, but still, <laughs> They are not convinced. <laughs> mm. uh, and uh, okay, with that, uh, with this uh, monthly income, you can easily plan other things. 
uh, to do other projects using this this retire this package annuity plan. I mean the annuity uh, payment. Mm. And as he mentioned, if if even if you with the with the um, the guarantee period, you are sure that even if you go, your beneficiaries can also get something. Um, uh, it's this program, it also it reminds me, it, oh, it makes me remember my dad. He was uh, a pensioner. He died recently at 92, but he was still getting his money and he died a, com a happy, comfortable um, gentleman. So I, I'm sure that I'll also have the same enjoyment at, at the end of the day. Thank you. A uh, round of applause to Mrs. Enoga. You are forced to ask whether Mrs. Senoga is a retiree or, or not. You, when you look at her, you may be forced like, maybe we are just cooking up a story to see that the plan goes, but at least we have people like Reverend Dr. Chitayimbwa who can confirm to the same. So ladies and gentlemen, in Uganda, they say Chisoboka. And uh, today, it's about the mindset. So ladies and gentlemen, for those that have questions, please hold on. We have uh, another presentation regarding healthy lifestyle because some of the questions could hit both. But as before I invite the next presenter, I want to just highlight a few that Mr. Mwaka says. You don't have to look like your neighbors. It's key. The decisions you take today represent tomorrow. You make the decision today and tomorrow is better. There's food for thought. How far would your funds get you? You might have them today, but how far will they take you? And lastly, our children will never or can never support our lifestyles. In all this, we need to live a healthy lifestyle because much as we have benefits for this plan, because uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mwaka said the benefits, we have medical insurance, we have MSO, the medical second opinion, and what's uh, the best thing is in this world, the probability of death is always one. We have a decent send off. So, when we combine all that, we must live a healthy lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, our next presenter is Dr. Okuku Fred. Fred is a medical consultant at Uganda Cancer Institute with over 14 years experience in diagnosing and treating cancer and is so passionate about healthy living. Ladies, let's welcome Dr. Fred Okoku. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Allow me in a few minutes to speak to us about how to live long. Um, a few months ago, there was a gentleman who died in uh, in the UK, he was about 99. And uh, as I was talking to my colleagues, we were wondering whether it's just lack of documentation, whether we live that long here in Africa. But we are aware that in Africa, the life expectancy is actually on the rise. That's why I really like this plan uh, because as part of my work, I take care of many civil servants and tell you what, they are very poor. They die in a very sorry state because I work in a government facility. So they all come there. You prescribe a drug, whether they were professors, whether they were senior consultants, 
it's only the CEOs who are here who can afford. But these civil servants, when they get sick, it's bad news. There is no um, insurance scheme run by government. And that's where they would be catered for. They are all referred to the government facility and you all know the challenges we have. And so it's a good thing to be speaking about how do we live longer? What are some of the things that can sh cut our life short? Are you aware of your body system? Do you listen to your body? Do you listen to your symptoms in your body? Can you know there's something wrong going on? Or do you just continue life without listening? There are people who do self-medication, no seeing a doctor. There are patients who tell me, you see, in our family, we never go to hospital. We never, I never, I've never taken an aspirin since I was born. It may appear good, but medically it's not a good thing. Your body is like a car. It needs to be maintained on a regular. A car needs uh, fuel, but also a car needs changing the oil, checking the engine, checking the tires, making sure the suspension is okay. That's how the body runs. And once you're aware of that, then you begin to think about, listen, start thinking and listening to your body. Oftentimes I speak to patients and I say, for how long have you had these symptoms? And they say two years. But the pain started yesterday or two weeks ago. That's why I've come. It means if there was no pain or if there is a silent disease, you will never know if you're not in the habit of checking. By the time you know, it will be a sudden death. No one wants to die a sudden death because you will have not planned anything. So in the next few slides, I will be speaking about how do we live a healthy lifestyle. Our colleagues in the Western world have begun living a healthy lifestyle. In Africa, we are still too general about our lives. Too general. If somebody is bleeding, no one cares to see a doctor. Can we go to the next slide, please? So one of the ways you can live and prolong your life is feeding. Food. Food is very important. The medicine will not change what the food is supposed to do. And the food starts at home. Food comes from our culture. You eat what your parents have been eating, but your parents were not as knowledgeable as you are in this modern age. You have a lot of information about how to live well. Your parents did not have they don't drive cars like you do. They don't take these very tough, tough alcohols that are on the market that will hit your liver or your pancreas in a minute. So they ate simple things. We eat very complex things. Too much fat, too much frying. I am aware that many people are moving away from frying food. How many people still fr don't fry food at home just by show of hands? There are only a few hands. Actually, most people have moved away from frying. It's boiled. It doesn't taste nice, but this is how to live healthy. Boil your food. Try to have these raw vegetables on. And there's a new saying in the medical world, in the medical world, bitter is better. Bitter is better. Those bitter vegetables, those are the ones you should have on your plate because they have a very important role to keep you healthy. I think if you look around the Ugandan diet, there are some bitter things, uh, there are small things. What are they called? Katunkuma. I'm told they are very pricey. 
only elderly people take them. The younger ones do not know they are used, but they are very helpful. So what you eat is important. Try to keep a regular. Do not skip meals, and then in the evening you eat and fill your tummy. In the Western world, there is a measure they call the capacitor impact or, in, or intake of fat. The amount of fat they take is high. Why? This is how they eat their meals. You have an appetizer before you eat the meal. It's usually some soup with butter and bread with butter. You already have a lot of oil in there. And then you have your meal. It's French fries. It's chicken fried, pork chop. Say it. And then when you finally finish, you have another part or another fat portion, and that's ice cream. Ice cream, a cake. And if you do that for the next five or ten years, you will be heading to a dangerous direction. You need to make sure that you are going green in most of the food you eat. So, when you eventually skip so many meals in the end of the day, dinner, you keep yourself with a lot of food. And many people gain weight in the evening. Why? Because you are redundant. You're going to bed. And so, what the body does, it picks up the ingredients from the food you've eaten and stores it. And the stores, you know, they are usually in the back and in the tummy here. So you may notice that in five years, a young man who joined ISEA, he was a thin young man. And then all of a sudden, he has developed a big tummy and a big back. Those are just stores of fat. That's how the body stores. At any one time when you're in need, the body breaks those and gives you some energy. So in your food, when you have your meal, your plate in front of you, make sure that every meal has a vegetable and a fruit, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch or dinner. There must be something green on that plate. Those are what we call antioxidants. Antioxidants are the ones that help your body to function normally. Get rid of the toxins in your body. So if you're eating lots of fats and you're not having any antioxidants, you build up with a lot of toxins. And what happens when your body is full of toxins? Your DNA starts making mistakes. These are the mistakes we call mutations. And they come from what you eat, whether it's alcohol, it will lead you to have many mutations. Whether it's uh, smoking, many mutations. Too much fat, many mutations. And it's these mutations eventually that lead to illness, like cancer and many others. I have a slide on genetics and disease, how your genetics can determine what you suffer from. Next slide. In the Western world, there is one pill you can go and get at the pharmacy without a prescription. And that's a pill to treat what we call gastroesophageal reflux disease, abbreviated as GAD. This is a common disease when you put on so much weight, when you have a big tummy. You're having acid refluxing and coming back and bringing a bitter taste in your mouth, causing pain in the chest, radiating to your back. And so, in the Western world, the pill for this, because it's so common, it's on the counter. You just go and pick. You don't need a prescription because it's a common disease. You have a lot of obese people. When you're obese, and sometimes it happens to pregnant, pregnant women as well, they have reflux. Once you start having reflux, then you begin asking yourself, am I eating too much? Do I need to cut down? Children, we have kids who are 80 years, but they are 80 kilograms. In South Africa, kids 16 years old are getting heart attacks. 
kids who are eight years are being diagnosed with diabetes type 2. Type 2 diabetes is how much you've eaten, how much weight you've loaded, how much fat. That's how type 2 uh, diabetes comes. If you're a parent and you want to thank your kid, please don't buy them sweet things. The too many birthday cakes, too many sweets. Yes, I know you love your child, but care about their future. We do not want them to start developing diabetes at 10 years. It will be troublesome for them. How long are they going to live with these pills? You know, taking pills for so many years, it's very, it's a terrible thing. Many people are becoming vegetarian in the modern world. And it's not common here. And any vegetarians here in the house? There is just one vegetarian there. Many people are becoming vegetarian. You won't go wrong when you become vegetarian. But when you're vegetarian, you will have some deficiencies in your body. Many vegetarians lack energy because of what they eat. Most energy comes from eating animal protein. Of course, in measured amounts. But vegetarians, because they eat a lot of vegetables, they do not have the sufficient muscle power to do certain activities. It's very difficult to find a vegetarian who is an athlete or a footballer or a boxer because the energy levels are not good. However, when you work out with your doctor, he's able to um, help you take some supplementation to make sure you build enough uh, you have enough other sources um, because you will be lacking in some areas. Losing weight is something we are all trying to do. It's very easy to gain weight, but very difficult to lose it. Very busy people. I'm sure in this room there are people who work from 8 to 8 or 8 to 10 p.m. So by the time you get back home, you're so tired. There's no time to go to the gym. No time to walk. And so you're actually putting on lots of weight. And you're asking, what do I do about this weight? There are many ways you can do this. You have your phone. And now there are apps that can help you even for 20 minutes. Even if it's 10 minutes. There are apps that can help you lose that weight. Helping you with particular exercises that you can do to help you lose weight. If you not have these equipments that people have in their bedrooms, you can still be able to do something. If you're not as strong as uh, our president who does 40 push-ups, how many people, by the way, do any push-ups in the, in the house? How many? Push-ups are, by the way, one of the most difficult things to do. You are practically carrying your, your 100 kilos or 50 kilos and putting it down and then lifting it again. So those people who do push-ups, you have to respect those guys. They are really tough guys. But it helps you to build muscle and helps your heart to breathe fast and then gives you energy. Most people who do push-ups will develop huge chests or those who lift weights. They have a very huge chest because that's where the, most of the work is being done. But it's one way you can help live a strong, strong life. You need some good energy to be able to live and, and work regularly. So losing weight is a big challenge, but even if it's 10 minutes, the recommended is at least three times a week, and each session should last 20 to 30 minutes. However, the session must lead to fast breathing. You must breathe faster. Your heart must pump faster. And there must be an increase in the rate of your heart. There's an emergency. Excuse me, I will cut my presentation short. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause to <laughs> Dr. Rikuku. There's just an emergency. And it will be coming in later. So, ladies and gentlemen, we shall have a video playing uh, to continue to emphasize the point. Thank you. Over to Mugalu.
Umusana. All along it was you. <laughs> Long time. I haven't seen you since our retirement. Oh. <laughs> Mine is a long story. Uh, but, eh? but in fact, ha, tell me how you managed to look this good when we are out of the system this long. <laughs> See, my Uncle Jomo, a few years back, signed up for the ICEA annuity plan, where you invest your pension and you continue earning an income to cover basic needs like uh, medical bills, utility bills, etc. throughout your retirement life. You too can invest your pension and earn monthly through your retirement. Oh, by the way, I told him about it. And now, I have told you. Think about it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. There is hope always, and the decision to start begins now. It is always, we've had uh, the phrases that uh, usually it's the mindset. So, it is you to start. You can be the next Mrs. Senogazake, and we shall have you. Okay. I'll be having the next video. Okay, I've been informed it's not yet ready and we'll be coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, next on the program, we meant to have open floor discussion, but uh, in the interest of time, please, we have notebooks, kindly not all the questions. We shall be collecting them, and later, if there are those like two burning ones, they will be answered. We shall try as much as possible to send newsletters and anything to address most of the queries. For now, if there could be any other questions, feel free to just write them down and uh, they will be answered. Next on uh, the program, uh, we shall, Director Pe will be coming in later, all that one we shall have Dr. Reverend Dr. John Chitaimwa to have the next presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Dr. John Chitaimwa is the Deputy Vice Chancellor at UCU he holds a PhD in computational biology, masters in mathematics, science, and bachelor of science with education. Having worked with higher education for over 17 years as the university lecturer, head of computing and technology, and former board secretary for the Mackay University Retirement Benefit Scheme, his focus was driving objectives and leading teams with confidence and clear vision. As the former board secretary, he was responsible for implementing strategic and operational plan as well as developing the scheme to fit with the margin regulation. There was no better way to have someone talk about the annuity than Reverend Dr. John Chitaimba. A round of applause to all cameo. Thank you so much, uh, friends. Uh, before COVID, I used to look like this, but now COVID changed everything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, the Chief Executive Officer uh, of the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda, uh, the representatives from UBRA, I can see Mrs. Uh, Nansas Rita here, the directors of ICEA, Lion Life Assurance Company Limited, the chief executive officer of ICEA Lion uh, Life Assurance Company Uganda, all invited guests, the media fraternity here present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to you all. Uh, it is, uh, I'm very delighted to be here this morning and uh, like I have been introduced, I have uh, worked with uh, a, a, a retirement benefit uh, scheme, the Makerere University Retirement Benefit Scheme. But I think the Lord was preparing me uh, for a career in uh, retirement planning because now where I am, being clergy, I am also into retirement planning. 
that retirement after the life, uh, uh, the, the, the annuity. And uh, one of the things that I normally tell people is that we need to plan for retirement. And it is very important to plan for retirement. Just look at your neighbor. And if you can estimate, uh, or if you can ask them when they will be retiring, or if they are already retired, I can see that the young people in the room, they are assuming that they have about 30 years to retire or 20 years to retire. Moses has even smiled because he thinks he has many years to retire. But the sad news is that you can even retire today. I am aware that you can retire today because there is a, the easiest way of retirement. And that easiest way of retirement is by what? By death. You know, if you die today, you will be retired immediately. That is the quickest way of retirement. That's why I said as a clergy, I'm now into retirement planning. I help you to plan for that one when you retire quickly and unexpectedly. But one of the things and one of the reasons why we take retirement planning seriously is that when you die, the way you leave your loved ones, some of you have very young families. Some of you have, you have just been wedded like two weeks ago, two years ago, five years ago. How do you leave those people? Some of you have two-year-old babies. Others have ten-year-old babies. How do you leave those ones? Will they continue with an education? The time I spent at Makerere University, I used to ask this one question that, um, you know, people used to always complain. Whenever they checked their statement and they saw that they had 100 million on the statement, the next question they would ask is that, when are you giving us our money? We want our money. And then you would ask them, why do you want your money? And the reason they would give is that for you people, you cannot look after our money well. We are the best people who can look after our money. And then I would always ask them that every month you receive 95% of your salaries. And we only keep 5% with the university contributing an extra 10%. And so show me evidence that you have used the 95% well so that I can be assured that when you get this uh, 200 million, 300 million, you are going to be able to make it. And one of the catastrophes of our can in, our, in this country and in our generation is that we have people here who are going to be employed until they are 60. And all of a sudden, when they turn 60, they are going to become entrepreneurs and they are going to become business people. All of a sudden, they are going to try to start a business at 60. They are going to try and start a business at 55 years. But the statistics are there for all of us to see. That for those people that try to do that, somebody said that after three years, they don't have money. Three years is a very long time. I can assure you, after six months, you have nothing. After six months, you have nothing. There is a story that I can share. We had a person, and uh, we are talking about this product of annuities at Makerere, and we are trying to encourage people to buy into the annuity program. And there was this very elegant professor, and he was, I think, the first professor in Makerere who made 300 million as a lump sum payment. And so as he was going away, we tried to sell him this annuity plan. And then he said, oh yeah, it looks very good, but what is the return on the investment? And I think at that point, at that time, the return on the investment was 14% per annum. And he said, that one I can do better than this. And so we asked the professor of medicine that what are you going to do with this money? He said, I am building a hotel. And so he took his money and he started building a hotel. Now, after two months, he came back 
And then he said, I think you computed my money wrongly. My money was not computed rightly. And then I said, what is wrong? Why are you saying that? So we computed again and again. And we realized that he realized that the computations were absolutely spot on. But the problem that he was suffering with is that he had built his hotel up to the ring beam. And now he had no money left. And he wanted to finish this hotel. By the way, this professor had no experience in running a hotel. And uh, I think three years later, COVID-19 hit. I don't know what happened and what is happening to that dear professor. So friends, it is my pleasure to be part of this breakfast where we officially launch this product by ICEA. I think it is one of the most important products that we can launch on this market. I am happy to note that this, although we are launching it here in Makerere University, it has been running for a long time. I don't know, I think we signed the MOU between ICEA and the Makerere University Retirement Benefit Scheme around five years ago. And we do have a number of uh, Makerere staff that have benefited from this scheme. I'm here to testify. Mine is just a testimony. And if you are asking yourself, you know, for me, I'm a lay person. When, when I used to tell people that when they ask you to be a trustee of a retirement benefit scheme, there is only one requirement. You need to just be a mature person and of a sound mind. You don't need any degree. You don't need anything else. That is all you need. And so when you talk about the term annuity, you need to simplify it for a simple man like me. And an annuity in simple terms is a long-term investment that has been or that is issued by an insurance company like ICEA that is designed with the sole purpose of protecting you from outliving your income. You know, sometimes we can outlive our income. So this is meant to help us or to protect us from outliving our income. Friends, retirement and old age are inevitable. And therefore, we should be prepared. We should be ready when it comes. And we should always look to prepare for that retirement actively. Now where I sit, I normally tell people that the worst type of retirement that you can prepare for is actually death. Not that retirement at 60 years. Because that one is very uncertain and it is, uh, you don't know when it comes. A gentleman called Tony Drake, when looking at the issue of retirement, he categorized the retirement into four phases or four stages. Let me talk through these phases very quickly. The first phase of retirement, he called it pre-retirement. And he said that this is the stage between 50 and 60 years old. Around that time, you start to think about retirement. And around that time, you start to actively plan retirement. When I used to work with retirement benefit, uh, I used to tell people that if you start planning at 50, that is really wrong. You should never start planning at 50. You should start planning the day you are employed. So if you are employed at 24, you start getting worried about retirement. Because that is real. Retirement is real. But for him, he says between 50 and 60 years, that is pre-retirement. Then the second phase is what he calls the early years. The one where Dorothy is. I think you saw Dorothy. By the way, Madam Dorothy, you are looking much better than me. You may have uh, gray hair, and for you have nothing. I think I should do, uh, I should get an annuity very soon so that this gray hair can reduce. But in this phase, the expenses are still somehow high. And uh, Dorothy told us that they are still high because people are consulting her at the church. They want her to contribute. She's still playing golf like you have seen. 
she's still going for trips and she's doing all these things. That is the second thing. The body is still feeling very good. The mind is still strong. The ideas are still there. They are still excited about new things and wanting to explore and to do all those things that we never did while we were still working. That is the second phase. But then there is the third one, which is called the middle retirement. That is between 70 and 80. And at that age, when you enter this phase, it is the least expensive of all the phases, uh, of all the phases in retirement. Because here, you will play less golf, you less, you will stay home, and at 70, people will be sure that you are now retired. As they will be asking you for less contributions. However, at this stage, what happens is that health care expenses start to rise because your body is becoming weaker. And at this stage, there are certain things which are changing. Some of the things which are changing are family dynamics. Maybe your spouse passes away at this time. Yeah. Maybe some younger people at this age they decide to marry. You find a 72 year old marrying again, having children, and uh, so there are certain things which can start to change. And then the final stage is, of course, the later years. That is eight and above. And this is characterized with health care as the major expense. And uh, this is a serious phase, friends. But as you can see in all those phases, phases one to four, the key component is income, income, resources. And we have to ask ourselves right now, how a retiree, a person who is not working, can live through these phases without becoming a burden to our children and to society at large? There is a very good advert by Ubra, I think you have seen it. There is one with a man, an old man, who is looking for a job. Eh? And at 75 or 80, he's saying, I can be a bouncer. I think you have seen that one. And there is this, uh, an 85 year old woman who is saying, I can be a waitress. Friends, when you do that, you are becoming an inconvenience to community. You are becoming an inconvenience to your children. You are becoming an inconvenience to the rest of the people around you. And the children today cannot afford to support your lifestyle. And so the question that we ask ourselves today in Uganda is that how will we be able to address this question of old age poverty? Or how can we be able to address this problem of retirement? And uh, one of the things that we need to think about, especially when we think about social protection, is this product of annuities. I don't know whether you have read the Constitution of Uganda, but if you have read the Constitution of Uganda, a pension, by the way, is a right for every Ugandan. I don't know whether you have read it. A pension is a right for every Ugandan, but I think very few Ugandans are enjoying that right. And if you are a trustee in this room, I want to warn you that you can be sued by one of your members because you are not fulfilling this right, the right to a retirement. I think I should do, I'm not yet retired. I was going to sue my trustees, but I'm still working. I, you can test the, the legal system. And so as you plan for those people, and as pl you plan for yourselves, the biggest question that you need to ask yourself is that how can you ensure that your people, how can you ensure that yourself you can enjoy an income that is beyond retirement. There are certain, several things we do. One of the things that we do, and I, if we asked in this room, uh, people are waiting to make for, for uh, 55 years, but also we are very happy that NSSF, the revision by NSSF, has granted us early access. And the people have been celebrating because we can now access our money early. But if you ask people that, what are you going to use that money for if you access it early? This is what they say, I am going to build rentals. How many people want to build rentals here? 
Do we have some uh, investment uh, uh, people in this room? What is the expected return on rental income in Uganda, average? Huh? 8%. That is if you are very good, 8%. Others say we want to do farming. Friends, when was the last time that it rained in Uganda? <laughs> when is it raining again? I planted my maize, but if you look at my fields, the thing is dry. I cannot even feed it to animals. There are so many risks that are involved with what we are trying to do. And I had a very unfortunate experience about five years ago. I wanted to buy land. And somebody got me a piece of land near Murana's farm. And when I went there, it was about 30 acres of land. And this woman was selling this land. So I asked this woman, that, why do you want to sell such a precious piece of land? And she told me her story. She said, I used to work in the Uganda Development Bank. And I bought this land when I was in the Uganda Development Bank. And I was thinking about my retirement, but I was also thinking about the retirement of my children. And then she said that at the time when she was trying to sell it, her children did not want that land. And they did not want to even go to uh, Busunju because they were saying Busunju is too far. It is a village. They don't have any use for that land. This woman had thought that she had planned for her retirement and for the retirement of her children. But this uh, retirement the package that she had, it was unacceptable to the children. Friends, we need to open our eyes. What else is out there that we can invest our money into so that it is acceptable both to us and to the children? And I want to tell you tonight, or the morning, this morning, that an annuity plan is one very good way of uh, planning for them. I'm going to finish quickly. So there are advantages of a retirement of an annuity plan. One, you will be ready for emergencies in, that, in, in, in case they happen. You will not lose the power of compounding, compound interest if you invest in this kind of scheme. You will not be forced to change your lifestyle greatly. I think you have seen Dorothy. I think her lifestyle has, has just improved. It hasn't become worse. And with an annuity plan, you will not outlive your resources. And in case you have unexpected health concerns, this will work out. Friends, as I conclude, let me tell you that one of the best things that happened when we are negotiating the annuity plan for Makerere was the fact that we were able to factor in some of the things that are key to a person who is retiring. One, health insurance is important. And the scheme by ICEA gives an assurance of uh, health. They, uh, they give you, I think the MOU we signed then was giving us two years free in terms of the health insurance. But I've been told that for the members who took it on, after the two years, they are now paying. They are jointly paying with ICA to have the same benefit. That is very important. The other one which was in that scheme was, I think, the funeral, the funeral benefit. You know, you might be enjoying and uh, you're enjoying and then you, the time comes for you to die and then no one can take care of uh, what remains. But I think these guys, when they take you on, they take you on forever. And I believe and I trust that all of us should take on this product. I want to invite the ICEA to come to Uganda Christian University so that we can sign an, an MOU very quickly so that also our people at Uganda Christian University can enjoy this kind of plan. It is a good plan and I think it is one of the best things that has happened in the retirement benefit scheme uh, in space for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for listening. Thank you, thank you, Reverend Dr. Tayimwa. These are more testimonies coming in to make you believe that it's possible. People have been there and surely you can start today and you'll be the next testimony tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are soon coming to the end of the program.
But we have around three key presentations that are about to come in, and then we shall be done. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next presentation is coming in from a guest of honor, Mr. Martin Suruga, but he couldn't make it today because he had other engagements. And equally, we have a representation from uh, Rita Faith Nasasi Waswa, Director of Legal Services, and the Secretary to the Board. So equally, she has the message from Mr. Martin. Rita Faith Nasasi Waswa is an advocate of the High Court of Uganda with over 13 years of experience in legal practice. Uh, drafting and providing cooperation secretarial services. She has also vast knowledge and experience in boardroom dynamics and corporate governance practices. She is currently the Director of Legal Services, Stroke Board Secretary at Uganda Retirement Benefit Register Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put hands together to welcome Rita Bay. CEO, Insurance Registry Authority, colleagues from UBRA, uh, licensed service providers here present, insurance companies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I have been introduced. My name is Rita Nasa Siwaswa, Director of Legal Services at UBRA, and I'll be representing the CEO. I bring to you greetings from our CEO and apologies. Due to other commitments, he was unable to make it, but allow me with your permission, go through his remarks, and in the interest of time, I'll read a few clauses, and I'll give the detailed remarks to the host for your further review. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as the nation grows, it's important to enhance social protection to safeguard the quality of life of the population. A key component of this is the retirement fund, which safeguards one's quality of life when they are no longer in active employment. As UBRA, it gives us great pleasure witness developments such as this that expand the options, providing a wide array of offers for the population to choose from to enhance their quality of life after retirement. The authority is concerned about the country's emerging old age poverty crisis and is fully committed to, impl to the implementation of pension inclusion strategies. One single-minded focus on ensuring scheme members obtain adequate benefits in retirement is more important now than ever. Year on year, a big proportion of benefits paid out as lump sums are no longer appropriate for people in retirement because many of them end up misusing them. As we were told earlier, two or three years into retirement, this money is all wiped out. So we think this is a very good opportunity and a very good product for members and savers in retirement. Oftentimes, due to gaps in financial literacy, lump sum payouts and benefits are depleted within a year or two, often leaving the retiree in a state of disarray and inevitable poverty for many years. Now, choosing the right annuity plan will give you a regular income in retirement and ensure that you and your loved ones are well catered for in old age at that time when you are unable to work. I therefore applaud ICA Lion Life Assurance Company and the Insurance Regulatory Authority for this development and encourage all licensed retirement benefit schemes to enhance the awareness of their members regarding the importance of having an annuity plan as part of their financial solutions in retirement. This product has been tested and tried and is available even in more developed markets and is a step towards the right direction towards ensuring that one's savings are spread out to guarantee a better quality life in retirement. At UBRA, we continue to emphasize the importance of consumer education and awareness to enable people to plan adequately for their retirement. I therefore task ICEA Lion, life, ICEA Lion Life with taking the mantle of leading the drive to increase awareness of benefits and, and awareness of the benefits for the annuity plan and make sure that the entire market appreciates this 
We hope that a number of licensed schemes will pick up this product. Um, these are this, this is the summary of the CEO's remarks, but my comment as Rita, now Director Legal, I'd like to commend you for working with the Macari Retirement Benefit Scheme. Doctor, I don't know whether you're now aware that the Macari Scheme is now a mandatory scheme for the employees of the university. So that shows that the work you did while there and setting systems in place was uh, a good effort. And the minister gave them an exemption from NSSF. So this is a very good product and a move in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. The detailed remarks will be shared with you by the host. Thank you once again. Thank you, Rita, for the remarks. And uh, every time you have a blessing of a regulator, just know you're walking in the positive direction. Thank you for representing Martin. And ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, allow me to invite Gabriel Kuria, uh, on behalf of ICA, who will in turn invite our chief guest. Gabriel, you're most welcome. Round of applause to the CEO. Um, all right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Emmanuel, who, as you have noticed, has left the room to attend to a small issue. Uh, but uh, it's my singular pleasure right now to, first of all, pass a vote of thanks. Uh, Dr. Chiteibwa, uh, Madam Dorothy, uh, Rita Faith uh, Nsasi, uh, Director of Legal Services, on behalf of the CEO of Ubra. I don't think we would have done this product more justice than the testimonials we've had today. I came here today to learn about a product that I can sell. Uh, I have gone home converted as, as one of the possible candidates, um, you, you know, to buy this product. And, and I thank my colleagues in ICA. So without much ado, um, may I please uh, welcome uh, the CEO of, uh, or the, 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 the CEO of, of, of IRA, uh, our regulator, to come and make his brief remarks. And you allow me to thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, after the CEO has spoken, uh, probably we'll go into wrapping up the sessions. We'll take one or two questions after. Uh, but uh, minding the time, Mr. CEO, you're very welcome to make your remarks. Thank you. Chairman of the board, ICEA uh, Lion Life Assurance, and the board members here present, the CEO of uh, ICEA Lion Assurance, Life Assurance, management, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda, and indeed on behalf of the entire insurance fraternity, I would like to congratulate ICA Lion for this uh, achievement where we are launching the annuity plan. Can we put our hands together to thank ICA Lion. I want to say that as many of you are aware, the Ugandan insurance market has been lacking annuity plans. And indeed, 
during my uh, previous engagement at Parliament of Uganda, we were pushing the, 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 the UBRA Act and many other engagements to take root. But one of the challenges was that the insurance industry is not ready to provide annuity plans. And that was justifying why even the biggest saving arm, the NSSF, gives people lump sum at retirement. I am happy, therefore, today to participate in this launch of the annuity plan provided by ICA Lion Ash Life Assurance. As you are aware, ladies and gentlemen, the need and the requirement of the insurance regulator is to ensure that whatever product comes on board is reviewed and it meets the best criteria of protecting the people it is meant to serve. I want to assure you that this product was reviewed by our technical team and it, it meets the requirements and it was approved accordingly. I want to encourage each one of us to uh, take the advantages provided by the annuity plans, which uh, we have had the opportunity to get uh, testimonies from different uh, people. I am aware that ICA Lion is very active in the innovation area. As you may be aware, they also scooped the Insurance Product Innovations Award when they innovated an Investor Plus product, which are the awards given by the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda. As we come here, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that retirement is a must for all of us. And actually, Reverend has even added on death as another way of retiring. I think that, uh, 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 for me, I would take that as retrenchment now because you are, your life is put to a close by force and you have no option to eat. Therefore, even if it is the voluntary retirement, even if it is the mandatory retirement of age, even if it is the retrenchment, all the same, our life, our normal life or our usual life comes to an end. And in many instances, we start a new life. When you retire and you still, you are still living, I think that is the most critical uh, life we need to think about. And I think you know that people who are working who are working with me in that in that place, hmm? the Parliament of Uganda, when we retire, for us we don't even require the six months which Reverend talked about. And you can see people 
destitute, becoming destitute. And for you people who are, who are in normal employment, you do not know how much it means uh, losing a parliamentary seat and next month you are on the street. First of all, the life you are forced to live is you live big. Because first of all, you get much money, but even the demands, you become a government on your own. And even when you lose, you still remain a government. So people come to you for help. When I was in parliament, I pushed, we pushed, I with others, we pushed and at least created the parliamentary pension scheme. And I was the first chairman of the board of the parliamentary pension scheme. That in a way has uh, helped a bit, but there is still a lot to do. I want to encourage the insurance providers to engage such schemes because they would also need annuity plans in order to manage their scheme better. And indeed, that discussion needs to be more enhanced with UBRA and the NSSF to see how can we achieve the intended objective of creating these savings even when we become old. There is a saying which the author is not known. It says the best time to start thinking about your retirement is before the boss does. All of us must plan for our retirement. All of us must plan that when we retire, at least we must live a decent life. We must live a decent life, and there is, there is no better way to live a decent life than having annuity plans, among others. But at least, as Reverend uh, put it, you cannot think that you are going to become a businessman at 60 or at 55. Even some cannot even become businessmen at 30. So now, please do not use the money you have saved to put it in business when you cannot manage it. I want to congratulate ICA Life Assurance for this great achievement. And I want to say that we will keep our eye to see how this product uh, performs. And please feel free to call on us in case there is anything you want the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda to help you. I want to thank you for listening to me, and uh, I want to thank you for listening to all the presentations. I also say that uh, when, uh, when uh, we were told there is an emergency, it reminded me, actually my, my mind ran to a security emergency, and uh, I was wondering, nobody was giving us uh, <laughs> clear <laughs> information until I, I forced mine to, 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 to come. But uh, for us in insurance, we must always be ready for emergencies. And uh, also, as a housekeeping, a housekeeping uh, rule, I was told when you reach the room, at least they must tell you two places. One is the exit. 
because that's, uh, that's what I was, uh, uh, I was running in my mind, that uh, what is happening next now. The next one, the washrooms. <laughs> Those two uh, things are emergencies. And uh, in many cases, in case there is anything, at least uh, the comfort is given. But I have since been assured that the situation is under control. Thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, we wish <laughs> ICA Lion the best. And uh, I think uh, the... Thank you very much, Alhaji. Um, we are going to have a symbolic launch, and uh, the director is going to direct on how it's going to be done. This is a symbolic launching of the annuity plan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a moment we've all been waiting for. The journey is beginning. We Ask also the directors, please join in. So the directors, please join in. This is an, an Anne, please join in. Let's all join in. And the directors of ICA. Yes, it is the moment we've been waiting for. The baby is going to be born. And uh, we, we shall take, the media is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICA. Yeah. It is a symbolic moment. With the current situation, COVID has given us new options. Gone are the days. So, Alhaji will sign first. A symbol showing that the baby is born. And the plan, annuity plan, is ready for all Ugandans. How I wish everyone who is here becomes a member. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I can see Al Haji has confirmed and has appended his signature. A round of applause. <laughs> On the same note, I can see. The director has appended his signature. And as a way of confirming there's been an exchange of the policy documents, this is going to be kept and it will mark the beginning of the annuity plan. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for. We shall have a photo, photo moment to signify the beginning and the birth of the baby in the house. Yes, we are taking the photo. Then after that, hopefully we are all set. We shall have the photo for the directors and uh, Alhaji and Rita, hopefully. Yes. Anne, you can take the seat. We have one more. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Yes. On behalf of the ICA group, we are being represented, and the regulators giving us a healthy relationship. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, we shall be. Uh, the director will be handing over an appreciation uh, gift to Haji. Uh, the directors will be handed on behalf of ICEA, and then we shall have the closing and thank. Thank you, remarks from the director. Yes. <laughs> On behalf of ICEA, we are so grateful, Alhaji, for embracing this day 
and making time. You're a busy person, but you made time and you, you made it. Thank you very much. A round of applause to this. A round of applause. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Haji, and thank you. Yes, we shall have, as the director picks his closing remarks, we have the last video that is being shown on the screen, and then the director will be coming in to give the closing and the thank message to Haji. Thank you very much. Round of applause to the baby in the house. Surely, surely there was no better way to start life than this. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite one of the directors to give his remarks and the thank you message. Thank you. Um, the CEO of the Insurance Regulatory Authority, Al Haji, Honorable. Um, I, I, I just want to be like you, you know, <laughs> and spray a bit. <laughs> so, to the CEO of IRA, um, to the CEO of uh, Ubra, uh, Martin, AKA uh, Rita. Um, it's a pleasure to be up here. Mine is going to be a short speech. I'm here on behalf of one of my directors, uh, David Opiokello. He's a former deputy governor, but I'm going to be reading the speech on his behalf, just like Rita, you did for Martin. I think for Pio Kello, I, I wish I was a former deputy governor, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Uh, I'm not, but um, it's a pleasure to be here. And let me introduce the directors uh, first, the, the, those that are present. Our chair is not with us today, but we have Director Patricia Onyango with us. Uh, Deputy Governor David Opio Kello um, had to leave, but he was with us, so it's the three of us who were here representing the board. Now, uh, and myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> Andrew Owen is my name. Um, as I speak today, it's going to be an interesting conversation because I'm speaking as the deputy governor, you know, or the former deputy governor. So I say good morning to all our guests. Um, I thank you for honoring our invitation uh, to come and la launch the annuity plan of ICA Lion. I bring greetings uh, from the entire board of ICA Lion Assurance Company Limited and the wider directorships uh, of the wider ICA Lion group, uh, which of course is based in Nairobi, as you heard from the CEO. Uh, Emmanuel Mwaka. So, here goes. As David Opio Kello, as an experienced retiree, and I feel I need to do this because he was going to do this, but he had some good advice here. As an experienced retiree, if there's anything like this, this particular plan, I'm proud to be part of this function this morning. When we think about retirement, many of us are cognizant of it, but like to believe it is far off in the future. It is not. I do remember myself now, thinking about my parents at 50. And I just thought that age was, was uh, somewhere in oblivion, far away. 
I'm past 55 now. So there you go, time flies. Biggest question, now back to the deputy governor. The biggest question I'd like to pose to you today is how long will what you have accumulated during your working life last during your retirement? In this market, retirement benefits are mostly paid out in lump sums, as you had. And this is the interesting part. In 2008, a survey conducted by NSSF amongst its members, amongst its members to compare the quality of life before and after receiving your benefits, had some very interesting findings. 53% of beneficiaries said that they were better that their benefits sustained them for less than a year. And by the end of the th first year, 98% had no cash left. According to the funds survey, most retirees invest their pensions in various you know, um, instruments, agriculture, business, land, rentals. Um, and the result is retirement lump sums being wiped out, leaving retirees destitute, as you heard from, from the doctor, Dr. Okuku, uh, or invested in ventures that are not able to guarantee them that income throughout their retirement. Gets interesting again. As a retired, long-serving deputy governor of the Bank of Uganda, how that good sounds, huh? I am privileged to have personally experienced and engaged fellow retirees on this elephant in the room. When it comes to retirement, monthly earnings, or cash flows. Today, I'm pleased to announce the launch of the ICA line annuity plan, a first in the market, a pioneer product uh, within this market. The annuity solution is available to anyone to use to secure a lifetime income. And I hope you've been convinced by the various um, speeches or presentations you've heard. The ICO Lion annuity is a financial plan that allows you to exchange a lump sum deposit with a promise of paying a regular stream of income for life after retirement. Those contributions that you're able to make in, in, in church that excited uh, uh, Mrs. Dorothy Senogazaki, you know, um, you'll be able to do or make those, those contributions. You may ask why should I get this annuity plan? But you've already had, some of them you might not have had. It is regulated, it is tax-free, and ensures that uh, one is able to enjoy their retirement income to the fullest and not live like a destitute. The product is guaranteed for life. You've heard about the escalation options, zero, three, and five percent. Um, if one, you're able to, to uh, to opt for a joint, single, immediate annuity, or deferred annuity. Um, you heard about uh, the joint annuity and the regulations surrounding that. You cannot just walk in uh, with, with a male or female uh, that you've just met the other day and have an annuity plan together. We are well aware that the annuity plans are fairly new in this market and may not be something that the public is familiar with. This is the first step. It is the insurance companies, the life and the general, that will begin to sell these products you know, to, to, to the market. And I'm sure they'll do well. You've heard about the asset base of the ICA Lion Group, um, 3.7 trillion in the region. Um, you're in safe hands. ICA Lion is financially sound and best suited to provide this product and which will enable you to enjoy lifetime income in retirement. For over 65 years, they have been providing, ICA Line has been providing this, this, this product um, within the East African region. And you heard about the 111 year old uh, lady, you know, who is still benefiting after 50 years. And ICA Line has been here for over 20 years. So the stability that you're looking for is here with ICA Lion. Uh, once again, I'd like to recognize um, our regulators, CEO IRA, Honorable Al Haji. Um, we actually used to work in the same building, you know, at some point, so we go 
uh, way back. Um, Rita, we didn't work in the same building, but you know, <laughs> pleasure to meet you. <laughs> um, CEO Ubra, uh, through Rita, we recognize you. Um, you provided the assurance that this product has been reviewed, approved, and uh, by both bodies, both regulatory bodies, to be offered on the market. I appreciate, or we appreciate, the IRA and UBRA for their support and for providing a conducive regulatory environment that encourages innovation in delivery of financial services. Finally, at ICA Line, we're committed to product innovation to suit the needs of our customers. We understand and appreciate that not, not, no one-size-fits-all solutions and an industry like ours demands tailor, tailored financial services driven by insights uh, derived from customer and market research. It is no surprise that therefore the company has won in the annual innovation awards for the industry since inception of those awards. As I conclude, I'd like to pose this question to all of us. What is your plan for retirement? As you've been asked severally, several times, I ask you to trust ICA Line uh, Life Insurance to look after you in your retirement. And as the CEO, Emmanuel said, uh, we believe for every life-changing moment, we are better together. Many thanks to you all and uh, to the CEOs once again of the regulators. I thank you all, thank you customers, uh, staff, and my fellow directors, thank you. Thank you very much, Director Andrew, for the closing remarks and the message delivered on behalf of Director Pio Kelo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for gracing this day and gracing the occasion. We don't take this for granted because we know you have quite a lot on your desk different, in different capacities. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the program. But maybe for those that have questions, our teams, we have our teams ready to receive the questions. We may not be able to answer them now, but be rest assured they will be answered. We keep our promises as one of our core values. And for those questions, either in newsletters or through our periodical mails, they will be answered. But feel free to engage any member of ICA in case there is any burning question. So ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, allow me to say we've come to the end of the program. Living is at leisure, but we have teams around to guide you or in case of any question. Uh, I have uh, Florence, maybe you can just wave. She's around. Should you have anything burning, she will be able to answer, and the team behind. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mogalu will be taking uh, the C of IRA for just uh, a media moment of less than uh, three minutes. Mugali, you're set. So leaving is at leisure, and as you go, please, we have a package behind. Pass by the registration table for your, pa for your package. We thank you, and we love you. Thank you very much. All along it was you. <laughs> Long time. I haven't seen you since our retirement. <laughs> oh, mine is a long story. But in fact, tell me how you managed to look this good when we are out of the system this long. <laughs> See, my Uncle Jomo, a few years back, signed up for the ICEA annuity plan where you invest your pension and you continue earning an income to cover basic needs like uh, medical bills, utility bills, ETC, throughout your retirement life. 
you too can invest your pension and earn monthly through your retirement. Oh, by the way, I told him about it. And now, I have told you. Think about it. All along it was you. <laughs> Long time. I haven't seen you since our retirement. Oh, <laughs> mine is a long story. Uh -huh. hey, huh? In fact, ha, tell me how you managed to look this good when we are out of the system this long. Hmm? <laughs> See, my Uncle Jomo a few years back signed up for the ICEA annuity plan where you invest your pension and you continue earning an income to cover basic needs like uh, medical bills, utility bills, etc. throughout your retirement life. You too can invest your pension and earn monthly through your retirement. Oh, by the way, I told him about it. And now, I have told you. Think about it.